this is the greatest country on earth. I've been to, I've been to 45 countries involved in disaster intervention. People have torn, in war situations, people have torn themselves apart. We haven't done that. We survived 94. We survived the switch over to 94, when people were stockpiling food, keeping their passports ready, getting ready to run from the country. It never happened. It was the most boring story for international media because nothing happened. The only thing that happened was peace, calm and love. If we can survive it then after so many years of oppression, nothing is a challenge. Good morning, everybody. Solim Wang again here at Worldview, the number one media company. This is where we explore everyone's perspective on all those things that can broaden our own worldview. This morning we have formerly Dr. Imta Suleiman. Everybody knows him in South Africa and around the world. He is the founder of Gift of the Givers, the South African non-governmental organization that takes care of areas where, you know, established official dom fails and disaster relief around the world. I mean, he's been doing all these amazing things to the point where many people are beginning to think maybe this is a president that we need in South Africa. <laughs> Dr. Imtia Sulman, good morning. Good morning, Soling. Good to be with you on the program. Thank you. It's lovely to see you here. You gave me permission to call you Imtias. You Soli Imtias is easier, right? Yes. <laughs> I don't know, you know, don't you think, where do we start? Who, who is this man? Where, do, what, where, does it, where did it all start? How did you see yourself, say, 10, 15 years ago, being where you're at today in terms of how much you've grown as an organization and the rich, the wide-ranging um, reach of your gift of the givers? Do you see this coming or was it just organic over time? Well, it, it was organic over time, but there is an explanation around that. Mm -hmm. so the, the basis is we need to understand that gift of the givers is not my organization. Yes. I didn't get up one morning and say, okay, I think today I'll form an organization, give it a name, get some founder members, write the constitution, mm -hmm. and do one, two, three, four, and five. It never happened like that. Mm -hmm. Gift of the givers has a very strong spiritual basis. It's a long story, but I met a spiritual teacher in Istanbul in mm -hmm. August 91. Mm -hmm. And as part of that visit, when he looked at me, this was post Gulf War. And right. the Gulf War had polarized, you know, with the Samuel Huntington spoke about the clash of civilizations. Right. And at that point, it, the perception was uh, Christians and Jews on one side and Muslims on the other side, mm. West against East, coming from an apartheid past, didn't help. Mm. And when I get to Turkey, to the Sufi place, the Muslim holy place, I see people from America, Russia, Europe, South America, Australia, New Zealand, Africa, all in the Muslim holy place. People mm. of different cultures, different of different religions, those who said they don't even believe, everybody was welcome. Right. And I suddenly couldn't understand, you know, the harmony, the respect, no discord, people accepting people for who they are, not mm -hmm. what they are, which group they belong to. Right. And the spiritual teacher saw the shock in my face when I saw this. And, and the first message... Was it your said, first trip to, to, yes, to Istanbul? My, right. And my first trip to Turkey. Mm. And, so, and the man says, the spiritual teacher who I made eye contact with, tells me straight away, my son, Mankind is one single nation. The God of all mankind is one. We just know him by different names. Right. Any imam, priest, sheikh, rabbi, pandit, anyone who preaches violence, extremism, discord, conflict is not a man of God. Don't follow mm. him. Mm. Anybody who preaches love, kindness, compassion, and mercy is a man of God. Follow him. And we had a right. discussion. At right. some point, he said, I read your soul. I see you are someone who likes to help people. I've done several projects before Gift of the Givers. Mm -hmm. And I saw what I saw, fell in love with what I saw, the harmony and the love, and I left. I came back the following year. How, how long were you there for the first time? Uh, uh, the, uh, one week. You, you, they, they meet on a Monday, on a Thursday, and on a Saturday. Right. So I was there on the Monday, the Thursday, and the Saturday. It was a couple of hours, and you don't be, mm -hmm. be with him all the time because there's people from all over the world who want to engage him. Mm -hmm. So, But I got quite a few good minutes in that period of time. And it was more about you know, absorbing what you see around you, understanding what you're seeing around you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and feeling the spirituality and the love around you. Right. Something that changed my mind, my soul, that it basically removed stereotypes from my head. Mm -hmm. That everybody, you know, who, who's from the country we have prejudice against because of apartheid, everybody's mm -hmm. not a bad person. Every right. guy from other, other religions is not a bad so guy. So was it, was it a multi-religious gathering or was it Muslim? It's a Muslim gathering with multi-religious people present. Right. And, and, and from what I heard is people from all over the world always mm -hmm. come there. Mm -hmm. to, to watch 
and to see what's going on. So, and it's a tradition for years, which of course, to me, was my first experience, even as a Muslim. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it was, it was, it was very, it was, it was, it was a magnificent feeling to see people so respectful of each other, given the difficulties in the world, the conflict in the different countries, the conflict right. post-Gulf War, the, the Gulf War itself. And the multi-party <laughs> negotiations were happening in South Africa already around the time, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they already started. They moved up to 1990. Right. You know, there, there, in fact, before 1990, Mandela was released in 1990. Yeah, yeah, correct. So it was already happening at that time. And it was something, it was an eye-opener. And I went back, I said, look, this is a perfect, I hope the world could be as perfect as this. You know, and so I get back, and 6 August 92, I come back to Turkey. Mm-hmm. My heart yearns to be there. On a Thursday night at 10 p.m., the spiritual teacher looks me straight in the eye, and he looks heavenward. And those in, the, in, in that order for years said, what happened that night has never happened before. Oh. And he, looks, he speaks to me in fluent Turkish. I don't understand a word of Turkish, but I understood every single word that he said that night. Wow. He said, my son, I'm not asking you. I'm instructing you to form an organization. The name in Arabic will be Wakful Wakifin. Translated, gift of the givers. You will what for what defin? What for what defin? Wak, wak, wakful Wakifin. Okay, Wakful what defin? Yep. Waki, Q. Wakifin. Oh, yeah. Wakful Wakifin. Yes. Arabic, okay. we translated closely, became the gift of the givers. Right. You will serve all people of all races, all religions, mm. all colors, all classes, all cultures, mm. of any geographical location and of any political affiliation. And but he was saying this them. to you in free. There, was, there were other people in the room. He's looking at you. Yeah, looking all all of us saying there. this. Wow. No, it was packed. Everybody was there. Right. It was a massive crowd. Right. You would serve all people unconditionally. You will expect nothing in return, not even a thank you. This is an instruction for you for the rest of your life. And wow. then the spiritual message came. Remember, my son, that whatever you do is done through you and not by you. Mm. Then to answer your question, subsequently, every time I met him, he said this thing will get big and bigger and bigger. But I never envisaged it getting to what it got to now. Never in my wildest dreams that I thought it'll get so big to get to so many people. And he said, he he gave things, he said people from all over the world will look for you. That happens all the time. Are you, you never, is it like your spiritual father now? Do you, do you have a, like an annual pre- pilgrimage to meet with him to share the story? No, you, you, you communicate via, you know, by intermediaries. Right. And but he passed on in 1999. Mm. And then in the spiritual order, a new person takes on uh, over. And then, of course, the first person was, that person was his first lieutenant, who I also knew very well. Mm. And, you know, so I, but the problem was that after he passed on, I found it very hard to connect with another teacher even though there was nothing wrong with the teacher. My right. connection with my first teacher was so strong that I felt him in my presence more when he was passed on than when he was, than when he was alive. Oh. You know, I felt him closer to me. And then eventually in 2016, I said, no, the spiritual law teaches that you have to connect with the next teacher. Mm-hmm. So I went in 2016, although I'd connected with him immediately after the first teacher passed on. Mm-hmm. And then I had a few engagements you know, with him and you, you have communication by WhatsApp and email and that kind of stuff. And then he passed on on the 4th of September. Mm. And strangely enough, when I was there in 2019, the person who's the new uh, uh, teacher now had just been in, in, inaugurated a week ago. Mm. In my mind, Sama it told me that he's going to be the next teacher. You know, what do you call the what, what's the proper name for them? The, the teachers we call him Sheikh. We just call him Sheikh. Sheikh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. The Sheikh of the order. Yeah. You know? Okay. But the, but in this case, the Grand Sheikh. Because he's the overall the number one in charge, mm-hmm. and the other ones I just call Sheikh or Khalifs, you know, right. uh, representatives yes. after. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and so the new one has come on, which I have to reconnect with now, which means I got to go back to Turkey at some point. So, to answer your question, there was always connection between mm-hmm. people who were linked to him, and it was always if something was worrying me, I would send him a message and I would mm-hmm. get a reply a few days later. Mm-hmm. So, the connection was always there, except oh. when he passed on, I found it very difficult to connect with a new teacher, although he's a fantastic man. And at some point, I started the connection with him and then eventually met him a few times, mm-hmm. you know. And of course, now the same thing has to happen with a third mm-hmm. teacher. And at, it was that at same first teacher who said, you know, you will never look for money. Mm-hmm. People will come looking for you from all over the world, you mm-hmm. know, and you will grow and grow and grow. And he kept on emphasizing, whatever but, you do is done through you and not by you. Have you, I, I don't know if you, it's a strange question. Did you watch Spider-Man 1? <laughs> In the Spider-Man 1, they say, with great, with power, 
comes responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility, or something along those lines. But I have observed over time, and I'm sure you have too, that if you want to see the real character of an individual, give them either a lot of money or a lot of power, and you see how quickly, it, at least for some people, it goes to the head and they become another something else, a monster in many cases. How do you remain grounded throughout all of this? Because it's his first teaching to me. That, mm. that same night was, remember whatever you do is done through you mm. and not by you. Yeah. There's no place for ego. It's a spiritual thing. The moment ego comes in, you will lose everything. You know, and mm. ego is destructive. Ego is greed. Ego is avarice. Ego is war. Ego is monster. Ego is everything destructive human being. Yeah. And you know, it's the, and he said, even in the spiritual law, ego catches spiritual teachers. He mm. said, we all have to be ready. Not in the spiritual world and non-spiritual everywhere. That even in the spiritual world, the ego can take the head of us, a great spiritual of teacher, yeah. and then destroy him completely. Absolutely. And he said, that's the number one thing you've got to safeguard against. And to be honest, sorry, you know, if, you, if you're rational in, in and intelligent enough, mm -hmm. when you see things happening, you understand that the kind of things that we do is not normally humanly possible. You know, yeah. that the kind of yeah. things are put, are put in place for us and the things we achieve, you, you understand you know, there's a higher hand working for you. You know, mm -hmm. how do you meet the right person in the right time? How do you yeah. know where to go? How do you know which person is the right person you, you should mm -hmm. be working with? I mean, you, you've got no history or a CV or a, a, a special a security agency report or something. And right. somehow you just meet the right people with the right mentality, the right type of sentiment to mm -hmm. fit into your system. And that's been happening for 30 years. Do you do you um, meditate, often pray every all, all the time to always be aware of your impact and the person that you are, you know, in order to remain grounded, because you do have to remind yourself. I mean, you, when you see yourself all over the media, the beautiful work that is done by the organization that you lead, uh, there must be temptation from time, time to time to say, you know, I'm cool, I'm a cool dude, I'm a big guy. Do, does it happen or do you, does it never happen? And I don't allow it to happen. In spiritual teaching, it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't say, don't do the deed. Mm -hmm. It says, don't come close to the deed. Right. And not to come close to the deed is to prevent the deed from actually happening. So How do you prayer, prevent it? Prayer. Prayer. It's vital. Prayer, you know, it's, it's a lot of prayer. Yeah. You know, all the time. And, and key reaffirming that this is not you. That this Have you ever you. felt endangered? No. Oh, yeah, yes. No. Only by, I mean, physically, yes. In a war zone, I was shot yeah. at. Missiles fell over me. Bombs fell over me. Gun was put to my head. And in South Africa, I was hijacked at gunpoint some time ago in 2012. So, yes, but I'm not afraid of that. You know, so... Because our teaching is, you know, you die when your time is up at the, at the appointed time, not mm -hmm. one minute earlier, not mm -hmm. one minute later. And the only certainty of life is death. You know, you know, you got to go at some point. So yeah. no, I'm not afraid of that. I mean, you're a, you're a Muslim man uh, and uh, you are known to be a Muslim man. You operate in a world where you save people from across the field. Do you ever think that it's your right to try and change people into into islam to bring people into islam so that there can be better people or do you say this is who i am this is who you are we're going to live and you know cohabit together in this world and make this place place a better place for everybody well number one islamic law does not allow you to force anybody to become muslim mm -hmm. you know it's secondly islamic law accepts all religion and as mm -hmm. the teacher said the god of all mankind is one we just know him by different names. This, the Islamic teaching teaches you to respect people from all religions. Mm -hmm. That they, The teaching from the Sheikh was you help everybody unconditionally. You're not going in to help anybody with an ulterior motive. Oh, I'm happy with hope that he will become a Muslim or this, that, or the other. Well, give me some gift or you know, I'll get something out of him. Mm -hmm. It's You walk in, do the job and walk out. We're not right. interested. You know, in, because that defeats the purpose of true charity, of true mm. service. You know, it has to be done with expecting absolutely nothing in return. And Ooh. we've kept that philosophy for 30 years. And of course, I mean, I can be telling you the stuff, but the proof is in, in, the, in the, the lived example. The, the, the recipients and everyone is benefited from us. No, we have no, there's no conditions. It's unconditional. Do you, who funds you? 
the public, the South of, African public. I mean, the kind of thing you do is like it requires huge amounts of money and huge amounts of skills and indiv individuals are supposed to be, as, as the organization becomes bigger, you need people who manage finances, who operations, who manage communication, who manage all these things. So you, you also have to be blessed with a good team of people that you can rely on so that you can also be able to go to sleep at night without, without keeping one eye open. Yes, no, we've got a phenomenal team, but you know, it's not this high expensive cost, you know, that people mm. trick off in a company. Mm. Every day works there, doesn't work on a Saturday. They come mm. here because they have a commitment, they have the same spiritual inclination. They mm. work because they love what they do. But they have to pay and their we, bills. Sorry. Yeah, we know they get they get paid, but nothing compared to the corporate world. If you want okay. to make money in the corporate like the corporate world, you come to the wrong place. Right. You know, or, in, in, or in the South African government. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's it's you know, it's people who come. I mean, yes, the volunteers that we have, the medical teams and the search and rescue teams, they don't get paid, but they only get called when we need them for an inter major intervention, locally right. or internationally. And then those guys come. You know, they come from expensive homes, expensive cars. Mm -hmm. They lie in areas where there's complete, there's no mm -hmm. switch control, there's no mm -hmm. toilets, there's no water, there's yeah. bombs falling, there's no shelter, and those guys keep coming back over and over again, and yeah. they say. The spiritual experience is, is priceless. People, you know, come like that all the time. Mm -hmm. And even in, within the company, we've developed the skills mm -hmm. of very ordinary people. I mean, a guy was just packing today is a manager, a warehouse manager in, in, in Eastern Cape. He right. used, to, used to be a packer. And people mm -hmm. have grown in multiple ways. We've understood mm -hmm. it. We've, I mean, recently, mm -hmm. one of my, 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 my son works with me. And he said, look, this lady came from being a packer at a supermarket. And while she was speaking in whilst packing, realized that this lady's got a lot of skills. Right. So he calls her and he says, you know what? You will answer the phone from today. Mm -hmm. And I'm answering the phone. She, and people started sending us compliments that this lady speaks brilliantly on the phone. Right. And then we said, okay, we're not responding to the social media pages good enough. Put her on to respond to social media. Oh. And she started responding to that. And we just started getting responses from everywhere to say, you know what? We're That's amazing. This lady. Oh. Yes. So, you know, you give people a chance. <laughs> it's, and what is, this is what the country is all about. It's about mm. opportunity, yeah. identifying people and giving them a chance to grow. And in the organization, we tell them that if you find a better job, where mm. you will get a better salary, not a, a charity related salary, mm. you are most welcome to go. But Have nobody you... leaves. Nobody leaves. Yeah. Even those one or two left came yeah. back. Yeah. I mean, it shows a lot of people will go, to, will stay in an organization, not so much for the salary, but because of the atmosphere in there and the feeling of, of worth. You know, feeling yes. they contribute, they they see the difference of, of what they do in the lives of others. And people will stay yes. usually. You know? Yes, they do. Have I you do. ever had to fire anyone? Yes, I did. Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, for, you know, give them many warnings, especially when it comes to theft, yeah. you know, and especially when we, when we tell you, if you want something, we'll give it to you for free. Please don't steal. It will spoil the culture of what we stand for. Right. It's a spiritual organization. We can't be having you no know, misdeeds taking place here. Please yeah. don't steal, you know. And and they get the stuff for free. And when you set that kind of example, I find mm. them on the spot. There's no second right. chance. Right. But I mean, there are labor laws in South Africa. You can, you can just say, because a lot of companies are unable to fire people who should have been fired long ago, even in government. We, we see people on huge, huge salaries on on, 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 on suspension for four or five years. Some of, even, some of the well, some of them even come back to to claim bonuses while they're on suspension. I mean, like, we, how we, do you we do? We take it? everything. We take everything to the labor law. We take it to the system. We haven't lost a single case. Right, right. Did you? What What are the values? I mean, when somebody comes into the organization, do you have a a, pay, a piece of paper with the values of uh, gift of the givers, so that everybody knows these are the 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 prescripts by which we live? Well, when they come in, we, we when we when we employ them. You know what? We don't have it written down because it's impossible to write everything down. You yeah. know, it's about being honest, about having the correct character. Mm -hmm. You know, to, and you know, you why did you first of all? Why did you come to this organization? Right. Right. So you should know why you came to us. You know, mm -hmm. and you came to us because you see the kind of things that we do. Is your behavior going to be consistent with the kind of things that we do? Yes, mm -hmm. if that's going to be welcome to come there. Yes, you may right. make a mistake along the line. That's possible. It's understandable. Right. People may have some bad habits. Doesn't make them bad people. You know, yeah. so we have to look at that in totality. So, and we, and the, well, the most important thing is what us, when you're in the field, mm -hmm. how do you treat people? Do yeah. you make them feel, you know, like there's some kind of dirt, that mm -hmm. you're the boss, that mm -hmm. you're more arrogant, that you, mm -hmm. you, you know, have control over their lives, mm -hmm. or do you teach them, treat them with love, dignity, yeah. kindness? If you fail there, I'm not taking yeah. you back. 
Yeah. Because so it, 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 it's, it's about how you relate to people. And that's the most important because we deliver stuff to people when great distress. Yeah, I was in, in invited to teach at, an, at a Paris-based organization called IPE. It's uh, for people who go into multilateral organizations, diplomacy. It's called Institut International Politique. And there, so we look at the history of conflict resolution. Obviously, in, in earlier, earlier times, it was you wait for the conflict to happen, and then you jump in, guns blazing, to say to people, wait, 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 you stand the side, you stand the side, let's sort it out. And over time, it's become how do you prevent conflict how, so that it doesn't happen? Because conflict is expensive. Con conflict resolution can be quite expensive, and can, it, can, it can be quite protracted. And that now is about creating conditions for there to be no conflict. So how, so you guys, do you wait for conflict to happen and then jump in? Or do you, uh, when there is, there's no disaster happening, do you teach, do you say to people, do you have tools that enable you to say, there's going to be conflict there, there's going to be disaster there, let's go in before it happens and talk, talk people down, I'll ask people to come down and maybe have them see that if they continue the way they are doing, there's going to be conflict. Or do you just wait for the group to be disaster oh, and come in? No, uh, see, our, our role is different. We're humanitarian. Mm -hmm. We deliver aid. We assist medical teams. We're not involved in conflict resolution. Those okay. are different people who do that. Mm -hmm. And then to do that, it requires some kind of political element. Before something happens in the disaster, then you have to get into the political space. You have to get mm -hmm. permission to come into that country to talk to different groups. Mm -hmm. Now, that takes a lot of time on its own. We specialize, we specialize in one kind of, uh, it's purely humanitarian. Right. But while saying that, we always preach, you know, to use for the lack of a better word, it's not a religious thing, but mm. you know, just to say, teach people that there's always better to have harmony, tranquility, mm. whether it's foreign nationals and South Africans, whether it's South Africans and South Africans, whether it's different race groups, whether mm. it's our country and the rest of Africa and the rest right. of the world, why right. in other parts of the world. We preach that, you know, or teach that love, and compassion and kindness and respect for each other. It's, it's far more beneficial, far more happy and you know, more joyful than having conflict and trying to prove yourself better mm. than somebody else. In the long run, nobody wins in a conflict. Nobody yeah. wins in a war. Of because course. the hate, the, the, the desire for revenge, the, the friction and the discord just carries on for hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of years. And mm. you can never win in a situation like that. As yeah. I said in the beginning, don't do the disaster, you know, prevent getting to the disaster. In the same way, prevent the conflict. Don't mm. get into the conflict and try to sort it out because there is no win in a conflict. Yeah. You know, people are saying, if you look at South Africa today, there's going to be conflict if certain things don't change. Mr. Dr. Imtias Suleiman, Imtias, people respect you. A lot of people, you know, they will say, yeah, maybe this is the man who should lead South Africa. People in South Africa don't have in, Man in Mandela anymore. We are a very diverse society and the, many South Africans live with, with, with the post-traumatic stress disorder. Many have not even acknowledged all, all backgrounds. But there, there's been pain in the past and they need somebody to hold them together. Do you think your calling could also be, maybe from time to time, or maybe you're doing it right now with me, to say we need to not forget that we need one another. Do you find that you also have to do more of that? I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and this year, I've been, I've, up to now, I've done 114 talks this oh. year. And all of them is nothing about raising money for charity. Mm -hmm. It's all about giving South Africans hope, telling them how important we are to work with each other, mm -hmm. show the flaws in the country, but emphasize the spiritual aspect. Yes, there are people with bad habits, doesn't make everybody bad. Yes, mm -hmm. there's corruption in government, but everybody in government is not corrupt. You know, mm -hmm. yes, there's a problem with the SAPS, but every guy in SAPS is not bad, you know? Mm -hmm. So we need to understand, we can't make a blanket decision on everyone. Mm -hmm. And that if you truly see South Africans in daily life, in the area that you live, where you work, at your school, there's understanding, there's joy, there's harmony. Mm -hmm. There are people outside that space mm -hmm. who try mm -hmm. to cause the conflict for political end or for their own popularity or for their own mm -hmm. ego. People mm -hmm. like that, I call them traitors and anti-patriots. Yeah, anybody but... who cause, cause conflict, anybody mm -hmm. who steals money, anybody with disadvantage, poor people mm -hmm. or the South African society is a traitor and anti-patriot. And that's what we need to call them out for. Right. But look, I I totally un agree and understand people like to say, but say say you talk about the ANC, but not everybody is corrupt is, or in government, not everybody is corrupt. But if the whole direction of the movement or the government is is in the wrong way, it means that even though not everybody is bad, the people who are bad are dominating the environment. Sometimes it takes a little minority to con to take it to direct a ship in the wrong, in, in, into the wrong waters, you know, stormy waters. Yes, that's true. What you say is completely true. 
and we have the mechanism to stop that. Mm. It's called the vote. Right. So yes. people uh, have to educate can, themselves. Yes, you have to educate themselves. You can't keep going, you know, in the same vein all the time. And yeah. you, you tell those in the ruling party that it's like the same thing. Why did you come to gift of the givers? What attracted you to our organization? Mm. Was it glory? Was it spiritual? Was it to help people? So why did you go into power? Did you go there because you said you're the liberation movement? So many hundreds of years, you know, years mm. over hundred years, you did this, that, and the other. Mm. They're helping the forefathers, helping the oppressed people. But did you actually go into do that, or did yeah. you go into serve yourselves? When the more you go to serve yourselves, you're in the wrong place. You shouldn't be in government. You should be in the corporate world or somewhere else, you know. <laughs> and then you don't, you don't fit the and, and the corporate world is coming more service oriented. You know, to be fair to them, especially during COVID, mm. the civil unrest and the floods. You can mm -hmm. see there's more and more interest from CEOs, not CSI, the CEOs mm -hmm. of companies mm -hmm. saying, how do we get involved in fixing the country? How mm -hmm. do we help our people? Which is uh, compassion in, in, and mm -hmm. in, you know, in, in materialism. Mm -hmm. With very, very, in, in the commercial world, there's not compassion how to serve. Right. So in the same way, while the corporate world is coming towards mm -hmm. humanity, within the government, you are there to serve. If you don't make the grade and you're there for the wrong reason, then you got to leave. Mm -hmm. And the people who can see that they have the power in the end, Say sorry, we don't want you. Go. Well, yeah, but look, um, uh, I mean, we've seen through state capture and other continuing forms of corruption in South Africa that uh, many people in the corporate world have been have participated in some of that stuff. Uh, a lot of money has gone through the banks in South Africa that was stolen. If I, I'm a teacher, I get paid, and money my only money comes into a into my South African bank account. I get asked fill in this form. They say, well, "What's this money for?" But people have moved millions, millions, and millions, and people still fund political parties that are corrupt. Surely the corporate world needs to be clear. They need to raise a voice that says we can't, we, it's not good for South Africa for these things to happen. But it seems like they keep quiet because they can, some of them get government, uh, government uh, business and they can't afford to lose that. So they'd rather keep quiet, look the other way. Well, that has changed. That has changed and is changing mm. more and more. Mm. And whilst we're talking about an ethical dilemma in government and in the public, you have to talk about it in the corporate world. And that's something that I do also. And I yeah. keep telling them, you guys say government is corrupt, but who corrupts government? Yeah. Yeah. You are the guys that corrupt government. But at the same level, why is there changes and, you know, an awareness among and people inside government? The same thing is happening in the corporate world also. Mm. And you find a lot of people wanting to fix things. For mm. example, the floods that happened, the corporate world didn't say, let's put millions of rands into government's hands. They said, no, no money to government. You know, they right. don't want to go there anymore. Yeah. And, and, and you can see that there's a cooling off between government and political parties mm -hmm. because the political parties prove they couldn't save the corporate world from the unrest in 2021. Mm -hmm. And the billions of rands that we put into your hands, you failed us. We lost over 50 billion. So you are an unreliable partner. You're not, you know, we can't respect you and we can't deal with you because you've proven that you can't do anything, you know, constructive. So that, and, and, and in the, the, what all that has happened Mm -hmm. It's good that it has happened. You know, state capture has woken us up because we are just all South African citizens. We just sat back and say, okay, government dispensation is changed. Everything's going well. Leave everything to government. And people went to sleep. And, you know, mm -hmm. and now suddenly the good thing, is it has been exposed. It wasn't put under the carpet. Mm -hmm. People are trying to, to, you know, to, to arrest people, to charge them. The mm -hmm. SIU, the Hawks, they're all trying to do their But Yes, there'll be always obstacles to stop them, to prevent them, to not to give them resources. But it's in the open. We're seeing what's happening. Yeah. And for, for me, that augurs very, very well for a for thriving de democracy and to see change in the country. And eventually it comes down to one thing. If we want to see the change, we must be the change within ourselves to see the change happen in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Does the president take your calls? No, I don't ever call him. <laughs> you if, know, I, I, if you were to give to be given an hour or 30 minutes or 15 minutes with him in a room, what what would be your two, three main messages be to him? Just go out to the people. My, my, my only message will be to go out on the ground and see what. And that's the message not only to the president, mm. to the ministers, to the premiers, to the MECs. Don't listen to your advisors. You know, they tell you what you like to hear. Right. What do you do to feel the pulse of the people? Be what true leaders are. Mm. They go into the trenches. They go down and they listen. And don't come and make a fancy speech. Yes, 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 we'll sort it out next week when mm. you've got absolutely no intention of doing that. Don't give mm. false hope, false promises, because you would like somebody to give you false hope and give you false hope or promises and leave you in the situation you are in, especially when they put their heart, their soul, their trust in you, put you mm. in power for one reason, to change the situation. If you really care for the people, get out of the cars, get out of the buildings and go into the into rural areas and all the areas and listen, rich, poor, black, white, Indian, colored, everybody, listen mm. to everybody's grievance, sit at the table and say, okay, 
50% we can fix, 50% we can't fix, it's going to take a little longer. But fix something at least. And let's listen yeah. to something. And every 1% progress is 1% progress. So let's go and do that. We don't need to do anything else. Do you have a sense that any of them listen to you? Yes, they do. Yeah. You know, I, I speak to a lot of leaders. They call me, ministers call me. We fight all the time. You know, in the daytime, we fight in the night with friends. And they know the fight is not for any particular reason. I'm not interested in their political power. I'm not interested mm -hmm. in government. I'm interested in the people they have promised to serve. Yeah. And, yeah. If, if, and if we don't do that, the country will go up in flames because people mm -hmm. will be desperate. And it's not about hunger. It's about lack of dignity. It's about humiliation. It's about total lack of hope, a loss of uh, 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 hope is completely lost. We need to fix those things. And people are very resilient. They're very patient. They're very calm. They're very forgiving. We can't abuse that. You know, yeah. we need to take care. And a lot of them listen and they say, what must we do? And a lot of them come back and say, our systems preventing us, prevent us from doing the right things. We want to do the right things. We don't know how. We don't have the skills. We don't have the management. We have the obstruction. We have the blocks. We have the bureaucracy. So I tell them, are you in government? Yes or no? They said, yes. But I said, what stops government from removing those obstacles for progress? I said, call a cabinet meeting. Yeah. And take all the points, number one to 15, that you don't like and start deleting mm -hmm. and start implementing it. Because I said, you guys don't understand three words. Urgency, emergency, and disaster is not in your vocabulary. You can't declare a national state of disaster or a national state of emergency, well, not emergency, disaster, and still take six months to do something about it. It defeats the purpose. When you say disaster, it means now, in the next hour, in the next 24 hours, not eight or nine months later and still nothing happens. So yeah. they have, there is a willingness to do a, a, a lot of people to do the right thing, but the systems are crippling. Let me give you one more example. In a disaster, like the case that had floods, mm -hmm. there's a complete disconnect. Who does the stuff? Is it national, provincial, or local? Is it disaster management, the K-9 or defense force? Is it the municipality or human settlements, Kokhta or water and sanitation? Nobody knows. So there's no clear chain of command. Everybody wants to do something, but nobody does anything because everybody leaves it to somebody else and nothing happens. And so that's the big problem. Yeah, but surely because we've had the experience, one would hope that somebody would have sat down, looked back at how it un unfolded, and then said precisely what we've just said. Let's have a conversation about ensuring that it doesn't happen again, or if it happens again, we are ready for it. Do you, do you sense there's that kind of conversation? If the floods were to happen again tomorrow, the same floods in KZN or in, in another air part of South Africa, do you think that we are more ready for them? No, we're not. Hmm. We're not ready. Because the systems are not in place, number one. But the number systems two, were created by people. Yes, but the people have egos. That's the hmm. problem. Every province, I mean, take the ANC in, in, in KZN told the Halima, they're not going to listen to him. They will announce a candidate if they want him. If there's indiscipline within the organization, how do you expect the government to be disciplined? But at the same time, there are you know pe people in government who are disciplined. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Minister of Social Development called me and she said, you know what, what are the problems with the disaster in our country? And she mm -hmm. called the whole NDA and she called everybody to sit and talk to me you know, mm -hmm. on, on Zoom. And, right. and she said, what you're saying is right. But she said, We've got a problem with our system. But we must we change the systems. I mean, yeah, that, so that's exactly what I told her. You know, and but but I admire her for calling me to talk right, to her, right. to wanting to listen and saying what you're saying is right. We need to fix it, but we need to find a way how to fix it. So how long ago was that? When was that? In March, March this year. Okay, so it's many yeah. many months ago now. Yeah. So, but I mean, at least it was a start, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even you speak to other disaster management people, mm -hmm. you can't change things overnight because the systems are too slow. But mm -hmm. the fact that people want to listen, they want to discuss, they want you to be part of them, it's mm -hmm. a good step. It's a well, good but, step but, forward. But, but MTS, it's, you see, this is the thing that we do best in South Africa, in Africa. We have these conversations, we say all the right things, we know what must not happen, we know what must happen, we know who are the people messing up the system, the lives of many, many people. And then we then we go home, we've had the conversation, it's great, we post it on social media, but nothing happens. You guys had that meeting in March and uh, this year. Surely there could have been some form of, okay, let's 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 have some key implementables over, say, the next 12 months, and then let's check on them. It's like BE, we were discussing BE the other day. Uh, it's been uh, around since the early 90s. Uh, a lot of people think it's messing up the systems, pro, you know, sp uh, preferential procurement rules, etc., etc. But we're not changing them, so we keep trying the same things over and over again we have conferences con beautiful intelligent conversations with doctors and professors and this and that but nothing changes so what's the use of it well, who's taking responsibility to make, to make sure that well, that's that's something of implementation. they need to fix 
I yeah. look with, with the electricity crisis and the other crisis they're getting, they're getting a lot of pressure. You can mm. see the pressure. It's the problem with there there never was pressure in the beginning. Everybody mm. just sat down, sat down. And I've, I've made a call to the country and I'm saying it loudly and clearly wherever I speak, the country does not belong to the government. It's not their country. It Absolutely. belongs to me, to you and 65 million people. And the moment, the moment we realize that we take ownership of the country and we start putting pressure on those people who say they're serving us. If you don't serve us, you're out. And that's why yeah. we need to use the vote. But yeah. at the same time, you can't keep complaining. Let's fix what we can ourselves. Because to be fair to government, mm -hmm. 7 million people's taxes can't look after 65 million people, given all the difficulties that we have. So whether mm -hmm. the Australians, the Germans, the Americans, or the Canadians were running our country, they, if they had 7 million people paying taxes, they can't look after 65 million people. Yeah, yeah but the, the thing is, a big proportion of, the, of those taxes go to into places where they shouldn't go. That's a problem also. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A lot of money is lost, but even in spite, even if it wasn't lost, mm -hmm. you still won't be able to look after 65 million people. Right. And that's why we've got to stand together and tell government, okay, we're putting your notice. We're giving three to four years. The, the corruption is there. The mess has been made. We can't do anything about that. You know, mm -hmm. let's put the people in orange overalls, attach assets, bring the money back from outside, mm -hmm. hold on, and make sure this thing never, as Judge Richard Zondo said, we must make sure that this thing never happens again. We can't do anything about what's already done. But we can learn from it and prevent it from happening a second time, you know. Mm. And at the same time, whilst doing that, let's try to catch those and attach as much and set an example to say mm. this will not be allowed. And the only people who can do that is the public once they take ownership of the country and yeah. say, look, we're not. Gonna. And at the same time, there is another uh, important issue. Whilst we're talking about the government, there are several servants who want to do their job mm. inside government. They are government. But they are really, really good people. In some, what the police want to do the right things. True. SIU want to do the right things. So, and let, whilst talking about social development, I must tell you, when the Jagas Fontaine, the tailings dam collapsed, mm -hmm. the social development guys were outstanding. I've never seen government people work like that in my wow. entire 13 years. That's very and I said, impressive. When I thought this, you know, I, and they, they don't, they're not young ladies. They're mm -hmm. in the, it was hot. They were, mm -hmm. within a day, they had the list of, Everybody was affected. They visited every house. They had mm -hmm. every name. They mm -hmm. knew was missing. They knew where to put them, where to move them, who requires what, how many in the house. And, and when we came with the stuff to assist them, they said, please, we got the list, but we don't have the items. We mm -hmm. said, we'll bring that, no problem. They organized everybody in the line and the people were disciplined. They were absolutely amazing. Yeah. If that is what real government is about. When I see that, I have a lot of hope that we can fix a lot of things in this country. Yeah, that's, that makes me smile. I, I'm very happy to hear what you've just said. But yeah, of course, and I totally agree that there are some centers of excellence here and there. There are people, and we've also seen people come out as whistleblowers, as people who refuse to sign a document that they knew would lead to somebody stealing money. There are many good people, there's no doubt about it. But maybe we need to grow that community of people. But we also need to, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in brand reputation management. And I think that all brands, just like the gifts, gift of the giver's brand are led by somebody and that person has to lead from the front because you represent the brand whether you like it or not you are the brand you are out there the same the things that you will do that you do how you do them speak to the brand a country as diverse as South Africa needs a president a leader who is able to speak to everybody who is who has the moral high ground as it were to say but that's wrong this is not good for us not for my party for my people being a portion of the population but for all of us South Africans this is who we are we don't have a choice you see we don't have a choice as South Africans we have to make this country work for us for all of us but if you don't have a leader who's able to stand from the top and say guys stop it this is not acceptable, this is acceptable, this is what we do, they're not acceptable. Then we continue going in all directions. I understand that citizens have to take responsibility, but there's got to be a voice up there that unites us, don't you think? Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. The, the, the citizens are taking responsibility, but the voice is not there to lead us. That's the problem, you see. Mm. So we have to come in to fill that gap, but it doesn't mean we absolve the leaders at the top from doing what they have to do. Yeah. And you're right. And you need leadership from the front and you have to do it without fear or favor. It's not about the political party. It's about the country. You know, yeah. it's, you are there, not for yourself. And until they realized that, you know, Mandela was outspoken. He was not scared of anybody. You know, we need that kind of character again to say, you know what, put in the party. And like what he said, if my party does the wrong thing, vote against them, you know, and, 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 and replace them. He, yeah. he was bold enough to say that from the beginning. Not that he found anything wrong with the party, but mm -hmm. he was making a statement was that was important to bear for the future. You know, it's a principle that everybody should, should follow. Yeah. That the interest of the people is above any other interest, in even your own interest. And if you do that, we can fix the country. And, and the president needs to speak out and say what is mm -hmm. wrong and stop it. 
and mm. and and the country comes first. The party cannot be first. Yeah, I I get a sense that, and I've been saying this for quite a while now that probably first of all, I believe that we need a whole basket of systemic changes. Do we need to change the way our institution functions? People are get appointed, or but we also place too much powers in the president's office, thinking that everybody is going to be like Mandela, and we've seen what happened. So and do, and I also think, and I, this is my question to you that we need to have a South Africa where the President of the Republic plays, pays allegiance to the constitution of the country, of the Republic, not to a political party. Right now, it seems like we have had presidents who have to look to decide every morning whether they're wearing a political party hat or a Republican but a Republic hat. We had the president, the current president, once saying that he would rather be seen as a weak president of the Republic of South Africa than one under whom his political party would be split. So, that, so that's not good. We can't have that, really, surely. No, surely. No, it, it comes down to why did you come into office? Hmm. And what did you come to the office for? You come back to the basics, you know, and you come in to serve, then you should say, I, I, I uphold, to, to, I said what, I uphold the constitution of the country, whatever they, the words they use, you know, at the time they, they appoint you. Right. And we have to go back and look at that. And you're right. Yes, the president has to serve the constitution and the country. And yes, we need to have system major changes in the way government works. It's a big flaw, provincial, national, and, and, and local. It can't work that way. There's too many cooks in the broth. There's too many mm -hmm. egos and nothing gets done. The whole system of implementation has to change. And even the way certain things are done, I think Treasury got to take con total control and not give it to different departments to control funding for, for certain things. I think right. municipalities is a big area for corruption. Water mm -hmm. should not be municipal responsibility. It should be a national responsibility, you know. And the other thing, as, as an aside, completely off the topic, mm -hmm. is that within the Treasury, we should have a budget for maintenance and repair, not put maintenance and repair within the different housing, education, you know, health, whatever, mm. put it under treasury and they themselves must take responsibility for fixing the country itself. So they, right. we have to read at what responsibilities we give to whom and you know, what should be a national responsibility and what should be a local responsibility. And, mm. and also the, the way money is spent, why one municipality will pay 400, 4 million for the school and another municipality will pay 200,000 for the same school. We need to have a central system where the moment the price comes in, the computer say, hey, something's wrong here, you know. So we need to have a more centralized system where everything is controlled, where it's price, you know, uh, matching to say, mm -hmm. hey, something's wrong. What is, this machine is costing 200,000 a year, but other mm -hmm. places costing you know, 1 million. There's something wrong. So we need a better system. Not that no. it's not happened. You know, all the crises we've had in the last nine or 10 years mm -hmm. has brought a lot of good people to the fore who right. want to change the system, who want to fix the system. And the, the biggest crisis would have been if this thing wasn't brought to the fore, nobody was interested in the system, nobody was interested in challenging the system, mm -hmm. nobody was there to make a big noise. If that happened, we would have a total state of disaster. Yeah. But because that we are challenging the system and standing up, that's going to make the difference. Yeah, I think it would, great, it would be great for the minister, relevant minister, to one day stand up and say, these things that happened over the past two, three years will not happen again because these are the measures we've put in, we have put in place to make sure they don't happen again. To speak to South Africans, come closer. As you say, the ministers must go out to the people, not only when there's disaster, but the South, Af South Africans need to be kept together. Still. There are too many South Africans who feel, is there a future for me here? Is there a future for my children here? And they come from all backgrounds because they've lost hope and faith in the system. I mean, people live in, in a parallel economy. You pay your taxes to government to protect you. The SAPS is useless, mostly. Uh, you still have to pay private security company to protect your home and your streets. You still have to pay for private schooling, for private health, because you can't trust the public institutions anymore. It's, it's disaster. Surely we need to get to a point where all of this gets aligned again, and we have a government yes. that works for the people. Exactly. And you know, and, and, and it's not, and the best part is whatever you're saying is not impossible to fix from within, within government. You know, there's a lot of things that can be done. We can have world-class public hospitals because all academic teaching takes place in public hospitals. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, you know, it's basically management, maintenance, well, you know, desire to serve and the right and to have, well, I, I, the last few months that I've been speaking, we need four important principles, mm. spirituality, mm -hmm. morality, Mm. values and ethics we fix spirituality that the, spirituality morality. morality values and ethics we fix that and ethics is required throughout the country whether it's corporate government health law even the religious sector the ngo sector all yeah. all need ethics and we bring that into the country and bring consciousness and awareness to do the right things things will fall into place you won't have to look for money Money yeah. will find out. Hey, yeah. I love you, man. I, I really do. So I teach branding, and I and I say to people who to 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 manage a good brand, you need to have a vision. 
in terms of the country plan to the third South Africa, we have the constitution. I want to say to people, please go if you don't have time, just read the 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 the, the preamble to the South African constitution. It will remind you of what we tried of the project South Africa from 1994. What we've been trying to create, we've forgotten that. You need yeah. a vi vision. Where are you going with this thing? You need values, and you put them into four uh, brackets. You need values. There's no doubt about. It. But you also you need leadership. You need people who are able to lead from the front. You can have all the fancy values and ethics and codes of conduct and all that. But if the people on the, in the in the, at the top don't think that the the rules be, uh, uh, they must also fall under the same rules. Where like in South Africa, we've become, in my view, uh, some kind of um, a whale and animal farm where the law is. For, it's for some people and not for other people. It's a big problem. But the fourth thing is that you no brand exists on an island of its own. South Africa is not an island of its own. For instance, we exist in a world community of nations. How do we play a part that is constructive in that broader worldly ecosystem where there are humans and animals and plants and microbiological beings and and and, and oceanic beings, etc. So how do we what role do we want to play as a country? And, and but we you can't do that if you don't have the leadership that constantly reminds we, us of we, we've who we've lost are. the respect of the world. We've lost the respect of the world. Yeah. People say that we don't reply to the emails. Countries, governments say they send messages first. Nobody mm. responds. No, everybody ignores them. There's nobody cares. It's it's not like what we were before. It's like we just got downgraded completely. And yet we have the skills. We have the personnel. It's just they just. And of course, that's right. We need a, lead, a, a leadership to drive that to say, we're going to be, you know, the best guys on the continent. And we're mm. going to do this. We're going to set an example. Everybody's come here. We're fortunate. People come here. They love our weather. They love our people. They love our country. That's why they're coming. You know, yeah. so some great thing we've done as a leadership, you know, and we can enhance that by setting examples as a leadership and we can teach values and we can teach things where people, are, you know, identify with the kind of principles we lay down. That's mm. in addition to our weather and, you know, to our, our scenery and the type of people we have and the restaurants we have mm. and the fact that our rent is so cheap to, for foreign currency you know all that kind of stuff but all that doesn't save a country yeah true leadership doesn't. saves the country and, and the people are looking for hope in a true leader and we, we can't waste any more time when you sit down to look at south africa especially given everything that's happening in south africa everything that's happening in south africa do you see any form of disaster ahead if something is not done? Or for instance, do you see? Do you think minorities are protected, are protected in South Africa? Do you see? Because sometimes a lot of negative, racist, uh, divisive uh, narratives in some political quarters that doesn't that doesn't get hit on the wrist if it were by, from the top. Do you think that uh, there's danger ahead if certain things are not done? It could be in that area or in a, in a different area. To me, the only danger, to be honest, uh, Solly, is if the people lose all dignity mm -hmm. and they're completely humiliated and they have no hope. People yeah. won't go uh, uh, try to argue they're hungry. If that's the case, Eastern Cape would have burned 100 times over already. Mm -hmm. As I'm speaking to you, every day there's children dying of starvation and malnutrition in Eastern Cape right now. And in South Africa? A, yes, in a country of gold, diamonds and platinum. <laughs> There's children dying every day. There's people without food. There's, and it's not only the poor. There's middle class who are battling now because of COVID, of lockdown, of lost jobs, and they're trying to save their dignity. There's school kids going hungry, university students going hungry, and of fairly you know, middle class type of families. It's not something new. It's not mm -hmm. just visible because people are afraid to talk. They don't, it, it, it's an embarrassment kind of stuff. There's farmers who are depending on food parcels, who want food parcels for them to survive. Not the farm workers, the farmers. We've got hectares upon hectares upon hectares of land, don't have the money because the drought destroyed everything. So people are in crisis, but people are patient, you know, God-fearing. They have, have faith and trust in God Almighty. We need to change the system. I have no fear. I don't even worry about the minorities issue because if you, by far and large, if you go in the streets, everybody gets along well with everybody. We survived the unrest. And in the same areas of the unrest, you know, the floods came. And the same people who are, you know, assisted each other even there was conflict during the time of the looting and the same people helped each other and held hands together and did things together we, we are a very forgiving nation we are a very caring nation so i don't have an issue with that the issue i have is with those people i said specifically the traitors and the anti-patriots whose big statements they bring about the division they bring about racism they bring about conflict they bring out it, it to, to harness their own image you know or to support their own image not mm -hmm. caring what's going to happen to the country those are the dangerous people of the country the rest of the country well, the rest of the uh, and I, you go to the schools, you go to the workplace, you go everywhere. 
people are quite happy with each other. There's no friction. Mm. It's something it takes off something, and you know, people go in a blind frenzy. That causes the problem. Yeah. Do you think government is aware of these things that you mentioned? The hunger, there's a widespread hunger, pain. I mean, we write about these things. We talk about, especially, we think people in the middle class. You know, if you think about it, COVID arrived and people were not allowed to work, to trade, small business, small business. A lot, a lot of these people had committed to home loans. To they purchased cars that they have to pay over a certain period. They drive fancy cars. Some of them maybe come from townships and their families, friends, neighbors saw them as having, you know, succeeded. And suddenly they, their banks come back, they take their homes, they take their cars. They are afraid to go back and say, damn, I've lost everything. So as yeah, you say, I, especially I, in the middle class. It's happening everywhere. I know of mm. people where the guy said, he can, you know, phone his friend and said, can you send a mood, uh, some food bus delivery? I can't tell my family I haven't got money to buy a uh, food. So can you know? I, I just said that I ordered Mr. Delivery. You know, in the meantime, I take a friend sent the food to the house um, and a fairly affluent type of home. I had airline managers call us, hotel managers call us, and said mm. we were very well off. We mm. can't afford to pay the bond on our house, mm. on our car. We've taken our kids out of private schools. We can't send them into other school. It's embarrassing. So we're going to homeschool them. We've told you the truth of our situation. Can you please send us a food parcel? Sure. A manager from a private kids at a private school. That's how things have changed, you know. And and people need the and of course we need to reverse it. We mm. need to grow the economy and mm. fighting corruption and disorder and this you know and everything that causes harm and the, the destruction. We need to remove that. If we want the respect of the world, we need to set an example, you know, in the way that people believe us and trust in us and hope in us to invest. Mm. The good thing is, I've spoken to. Company, the European companies. You know, I've mm. spoken to ambassadors. Mm. I've spoken to uh, guys from many, many different international companies, and I give them my perspective on the country. Not that they didn't know. You know, right, right. they all said we will increase our investment in the country. We have faith in the country. We know it will get fixed up. We know it's a country, country where we can make money. So let's be honest. We go where we can make money, and we know South Africa has got the potential. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a lot of young people. We're going to put them in our factories, in our warehouses. We're going to give them skills. We're going to train them, and we're going to employ them. And if yeah. that kind of sentiment is coming through, mm. we can do it. We need to start our textile business locally, our leather mm. industry locally, Absolutely. farming locally. And there's lots of ways to creating jobs and giving mm. people skills and giving them hope and giving them dignity and making them independent. Mm. It's not impossible. It can be done. Yeah, but you see, I, I mean, I, I totally agree, and um, I embrace the need for people for private sector or privately driven initiatives to improve to to feed people to create better schools and stuff but and we we mustn't think therefore we must let people in government get away we need a social total system overhaul so that we have a caring government we used to say it's a government for the people by the people show the people we all each one of us has a role to play but the people that we put in place have even a bigger role to play because they control the national budget they control policy making we, if they come up with policies that don't work that work against any effort private effort uh, then it doesn't it doesn't work in the end no, no, I agree with you. I'm, I'm not saying we must do the other stuff and, and, and neglect government and their responsibility. Uh, but the good thing is, when all other things are happening, the government is getting a lot of pressure and being asked by the media and by people like you and by the country, how come the outsiders who don't have the budgets, who don't have the taxes, who don't have the kind of money that you have, can achieve what they can in such a short space of time and so and let so little cost. And you are put in power by us. We have the money, we have all the institutions, we have all the, the, the manpower. You can't achieve that. What is wrong with your system? Mm -hmm. And again, it comes back to the same point. Unless citizens get up and talk and put pressure, the system will keep going the way it's going. And finally, if we show our our, dis, uh, our, our dislike to the vote, it will suddenly cause a huge awareness in the country. And, mm -hmm. and the government is very much aware of that. And people are now looking at alternatives. Of course, they need alternatives also. Because yeah. they need to have what kind of alternative system do we have? But the important thing is that the consciousness has started. It's not going to be walking a walk in the park pretty like previously. Yeah, I was a few years ago invited by the community chest in Cape Town. They have these annual awards where NGOs, big, small NGOs who do amazing work around the country in schools, you know, taking care of kids in poor communities after school to make sure they don't do into, go into drugs and, you know, other troublesome activity. They take care of old elderly people, all sorts of stuff. I was, I was in tears when I saw that. And I kept wondering, who gives these people money? Is there enough money to fund all these amazing South Africans who are quietly doing awesome work that should be done by government? Well, that comes back to the same point at the beginning. 
7 million people's taxes can't look after 65 million people. Mm. And you need the assistance of all these different institutions. These institutions are supported by private individuals or corporates. So that's where Corporate South Africa has come to the party as well as private institutions, institutions and religious organizations all have mm. a sense of, you know, altruism, resp responsibility, service to the people. Mm. Where government can play a role is improve its own systems and not be an obstacle to progress of the other organizations. Mm. There was always a question is, who is, is government, is government supposed to do something and not other people? And it, there could mm. be an obstacle, a block, you know, uh, some kind of thing that prevents mm. you. Like even COVID, there was a fear mm. that government was not going to allow any organization to do, mm. to do delivery. But that was, was not unfounded and there was enough pressure from the public to say that's never going to happen. You know, right. the public is going to stand up and it's going to serve. So we are saying the ideal system is we all work together mm. in, a, in a harmonious manner. Mm. Government does its work ethically, same with the corporates, same with the private sector, same with the NGOs, same with the religious organizations. We all realize that we need each other. The bottom line is, on my talks, and I've spoken earlier, mm. the message is the same, that we all need each other in a respectful manner, dignified manner, where we all respect the rules and we do everything within our system to improve our own systems, mm -hmm. you know, within ourselves and for our collaboration. And if we do that, given a short, it won't have to be hundreds of years, a short yeah. space of time, we'll fix a lot of stuff. Even like the energy, you know, give mm -hmm. people the whole, what it means to create their own energy, let them do it. We take all the pressure off the grid. You know, if mm -hmm. more people get off the grid and more people mm -hmm. use balls and more people get off the water system, it means those who can't afford it, who can't get to the balls, at least it's available on the grid for them. But mm -hmm. whoever wants to do it, don't stop it. Because as I said, it's our country. And yeah. whatever's possible, let's just go ahead and do it because we're actually helping the system by getting off the system. So there's mm -hmm. more energy available for other people. Yeah, there was a discussion a number of years ago that, you know, during apartheid, a lot of NGOs were receiving funding from outside governments, outside, you know, bodies outside of South Africa. And then the argument was, look, now we have a government for the people, by the people, money doesn't have to go from outside into, in, directly into NGOs. It must come through government because we have a good, caring government. Do you, is it still the case? Can, can NGOs on the ground receive mon uh, funds directly from outside South Africa or is there still a check on them? No, no, they can't receive funds from outside. There's no okay. issue. Okay. Yeah, but I, I think that was more specifically the government got worried. They thought there was a political agenda. Mm -hmm. You see, that was the problem. Right. They were thought that organized, and, and you hear that in Zimbabwe and other parts of Africa, where organizations are funded internationally to cause havoc, to cause conflict, to bring the government down, you know, that aid money is used for mm -hmm. political purposes. Mm -hmm. there, there is that danger and, you know, and that fear from government. But mm -hmm. by far and large, all those funders have actually pulled out. They don't fund that kind of funding anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, but recent times, what the civil unrest, but not so much of the civil unrest, but more about COVID and the floods, you see a lot of organizations wanting to come back, not for political purpose, mm -hmm. but for the purpose of upgrading the social aspect of people's lives, improving mm -hmm. health, improving water, improving environment, improving, you know, education. A lot mm -hmm. of people have that kind of interest and the government's not blocking that, you know, right. and okay. I mean, good. what in government? You ask people within government, people say, and I've, I got called by a, a consul, a, a consul from a big country. Mm -hmm. And the consul tells me, I'm finding this very strange. We offered money to government and asked them what they needed for the case and then floods. And unanimous, unanimously, everybody said, don't give government the money, give it to gift of the givers. Yeah, of course. And she said, <laughs> And she said, but she said, I'm surprised that the government people themselves said that, you know, yeah. so they, they, there is an awakening to put money to use the, the right way. So, yes, they don't block money coming in. In fact, to be honest, they do appreciate what is done. So, the, the, say, so the money finally did come loudly. through. Right. Yeah, they don't okay. say it loudly because they know where they fail. This mm. thing helping save their skin, you know, it, and that's happening. And a lot of them, as I said, are very good people. They mm. just don't know the system, how to do it and how to bypass their own systems. Right. So, uh, MTS, you've been called you've been you've received this calling many years ago to lead this awesome organization called the gift of the givers you've done awesome work in south africa across the world would you accept another call that says dude your country needs you go into government for two three years and just help you know some provide some moral leadership there or would you rather stay where you are well number one my spiritual teacher saw this already in 92 mm -hmm. and he told me in that time that you will never be in government you will never be in politics. Mm -hmm. You will always work for the government. Okay. And he told me that 30 years ago, long before the calls came. And I was thinking, why would you tell me something like that? And now I see 30 years later why that's happening. Secondly, if the spiritual law tells me that you're going to be in government, then I will be in government. Mm -hmm. The spiritual mm -hmm. law asked me to do that because I follow everything by the spiritual law, but it's very unlikely. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, you are far more effective from outside government than inside government. 
We are successful because we're working from outside government for 30 years. And we can influence government. We can influence people. Don't feel afraid of us because they know we're not there to take anything. We're there to mm. enhance and support everything. So mm. all political parties, all government departments, everybody is quite happy to work with us because we're not afraid. They're afraid we're going to take over some system. We're there for only one reason: if we improve the lives, it could be the lives of their families that we're improving, mm. or their grandparents, or their uncles and aunties. That whatever we're doing, you know, the water doesn't select. Okay, I'm only going. Not going to the poor people's houses. I'm going mm. to the rich people's houses. I'm not going. I'm not. There's no water. It's not going anywhere. So rich, mm. poor, black, white, rich, political, non-political, everybody benefits from our interventions. And to mm. me, I think I think that's still the same system. No obstruction, no red tape, no bureaucracy. I can break rules. I break rules right. all the time. You know, I do what I want. You know, and that's the advantage of being outside. Okay. So as a final word, we are coming to the end of this awesome discussion for today. If you were to have a message for the people of South Africa, for the people of Africa, for the people of the world, what would you say? For, but specifically for South Africans, this is the greatest country on earth. I've been to, I've been to 45 countries involved in disaster intervention. People have torn, in war situations, people have torn themselves apart. We haven't done that. We survived 94. We survived the switch over to 94 when people were stockpiling food, keeping their passports ready getting ready to run from the country. It never happened. It was the most boring story for international media because nothing happened. The only thing that happened was peace, calm and love. If we can survive it then after so many years of oppression, nothing is a challenge. We've survived, you know, the floods, the, the COVID, the civil unrest, the, the floods again, and even stage six load shedding. We survived that too. So nothing should be an issue. Let's, but don't wait for somebody else to do something for you. Let's all us of us say, and I don't mean rich only, poor, rich, middle class, all of us, let's see how we can make a difference to this country. Mm -hmm. And let's hold politicians accountable. Those people that we put into power, let's hold them accountable to you to, to make sure they deliver what they're supposed to deliver in the interest mm -hmm. of the country. So there's no need to run anyway, no need to get depressed. We can fix the country if we all work together. The emphasis is on working together harmoniously and we can achieve that as South Africans. Okay. And to Africans in the world, to the broader world, well, right? and, and, you know, and to to to, to and, and the same principles apply to Africa, the whole world. You know, the principles of of, of doing good of it, it's the same thing in any country in the mm. world. The yeah, we are all connected, are, really. A pain in one part of the world is felt elsewhere. Yeah, because you know, the, the spirituality, morality, values, and ethics is something that applies to all, every parts of the world. In mm. fact, in Europe, they've been asking me. They said, do you find that suddenly there's a huge increase in people interested in spirituality? I've been getting that kind of calls. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I've seen it in the country post-COVID. And yeah. you know, we all one family, one nation. As mm -hmm. my teachers told me, mm -hmm. mankind is one single nation. So Absolutely. South Africans, Africans, Europeans, Americans, we all totally dependent on each other. We have different mm -hmm. resources, different skills, different types of uh, things that come out from the earth, different mm -hmm. types of production, but we each need everybody else's stuff. And uh, it's far easier to deal in harmony than to deal in conflict. Absolutely. And, come, you know, and, and, and let's make that the motto that we want to work towards harmony, not towards conflict. Yeah, I would say to, to add to your word that, you know, we, we all have pain. We need all of us in the world, in South Africa, in Africa, of course, to develop high levels of empathy. A lot of times we think we are, we have, we own exclusivity to pain. You know what I'm saying? So we don't see the other person's pain. And as long as we refuse to see the pain that is felt by the other fear that is felt by the other, we cannot rightfully expect that others will see our pain. So we need to understand that we can't work if we don't feel each other's pain, one another's pain. That's very true. Absolutely. I agree with you a lot, Ali. This has been an awesome conversation, uh, I just I really, really appreciate this. I, I have to tell you that I decided not to prepare too many questions for this. I thought, let me, let's just have a, a wide ranging conversation. And it was just really one of the most beautiful I've had. Thank you very much. Thank you for the work that you do. Please do not stop. And I hope that, and I know that South Africans love you. There's no doubt about it. And just, just keep doing what you do. Thanks, Holly. Thanks a lot. And to our viewers out there, if you have come this far, this far, it means you enjoyed the conversation. Please continue liking this channel, subscribe to it, share it. And those of you who want to advertise on Worldview, you can write to us at worldview.help at gmail.com. This is Solim Wang at Worldview. Bye-bye.